absolutely horrific reports revealing the atrocities Israeli soldiers are uncovering as they respond to Hamas attack sites. Dozens of dead babies, some of them decapitated, full cups of coffee on the table, blood on the ground. Lior Pro serves a former lieutenant for the Israeli Defense Forces, and he joins me now. I, let's be realistic. This entire ordeal that the Israeli people are going through is horrific, and every story coming out of there makes your, your heart sink. But when it comes to 40 babies, I've struggled to come up with a rationale, with a reasoning. The only thing, question I can ask you is what kind of an animal can commit an act so grotesque. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. And uh, I, I don't know if you and, and, and the viewers know, but uh, essentially every Israeli uh, in high school in their senior year uh, goes on a uh, trip to uh, Eastern Europe, to Poland, uh, to see the death camps, to see the concentration camps, really sort of to try and physically get in the shoes of the people that uh, went, went through that brutality uh, in the Holocaust and World War II. And I think that Nothing can prepare uh, people, uh, the people on the ground, to, to what we're seeing. Sort of, uh, you know, in the you know in the southern border, the communities mowed down, families uh, butchered and murdered, as you said, uh, babies slaughtered. This is uh, you know truly, truly unconscionable. And I think that sort of uh, you know what what you're seeing is a move from you know shock, awe, disgust, and and, and grief. Uh, now, uh, sort of, to to uh, an amazing uh, national unity that I've and I don't think anyone has seen before. There's literally every single person doing what they can to assist, whether it's bloodlines, support, 150% uh, of uh, reservists uh, being uh, joining up and volunteering. It, it really is uh, an incredible sort of feeling of national unity, sort of to try and. Uh, you know, with the power of, uh, you know, everyone together to try and get sort of uh, uh, beyond, uh, if that's possible, these in insane acts. I can't imagine what this does to the psyche of a soldier. I think for some, it, it has to just knock them out. But uh, at the same token, it has to inspire them to fight. As to the fight, you know the training that the IDF goes through. You've gone through that training yourself. Walk us through what they are doing literally as we speak to prepare for the fight ahead. So first of all, there's what I call the uh, receipt of uh, the phone call. Uh, there's the automated phone call that comes in and essentially uh, calls you up in what's called an Edict 8, which essentially brings you in uh, uh, immediately and you go and you grab your gear and you meet all your team and friends uh, uh, and then you head down either to the south or a lot of teams are also going up to the north to, to, to prepare. And then essentially you have a very uh, tense uh, few days where on the one hand you're preparing tactically, studying the maps, understanding where your team and your platoon need to be positioned, the navigation routes, uh, and on the other hand, sort of a very tense feeling because in the, the, the fog of war, uh, the, the, the soldiers uh, have no idea when you're going to go in. So it's really trying to be as uh, prepared as, uh, as possible. I'd have to tell you, to your point, this is, uh, yes, it's tense, uh, but it's also a privilege, uh, the fact that uh, Israel does have the ability to defend itself that, you know, we, you know, we, we are not like we were uh, 75 years ago. And that's, uh, you know, something that every, every person, every soldier feels uh, before going in, that it is a privilege to be in that position. In the 30 seconds we have remaining, you are someone who participated in a ground invasion of Gaza. As briefly as you can, explain what that entails for the soldiers, because we've been told it's a lot of, I don't want to say hand-to-hand, -hand, but door-to-door, -door, close quarters, urban warfare. Absolutely. It's the most difficult type of warfare you can imagine. Very dense urban warfare. Uh, you need to, as you said, go house by house. Uh, the, the amount of uh, booby traps and tunnels uh, that, that are used to uh, a surprise and try to abduct soldiers are, are everywhere. Uh, and that's something that you have to, to prepare for. You have to be very, very sort of vigilant and diligent sort of in every action. And this is what the, the people on the ground are, are focused on right now. And, and if possible, I know it's a, it's a bit sure. off topic, but, uh, you know, I, I do think that it is something that everyone, at least in Israeli here in, uh, in New York and everyone on the ground is feeling. It is that feeling, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, a friend in need is a friend indeed. And really sort of, uh, I feel like the outpour of support uh, from across the U.S., from 
all the different communities, the leaderships, uh, sort of both right. sides of the aisle uh, has been amazing. And just so you know that it is really felt on the ground and everyone appreciates it incredibly.